time, it became clear to myself that the application was really to fulfill all righteousness, and for him to get paid, as it seems it would be unethical for him to refuse my money on the grounds that I was not qualified. Interestingly, there was something I did back then that I am still proud of till today. After his research, I asked him if he had found any grounds for my application, and he responded in the affirmative. I then asked him to show and explain those grounds to me. He just mumbled utter rubbish, and it was at that point I confirmed my suspicion. Afterwards, I told him to send me a copy of my application, statements, and supporting documents, before making the submission so that I could peruse them. And as you are probably thinking, he never sent them to me. After about three months, we got a response from the home office, which was a decline of my application, on the grounds that I did not show enough corroborating documents that I qualified for what I was applying for. If you recall, I told you the legislation surrounding citizenship by birth changed around my birth time, and ordinarily just being born without your parents being resident meant that you weren't British. Hard pill to swallow I know. It was later I realized that the lawyer was deliberately coy about this with the home office and did not provide any evidence to support this. Probably because there was none. Then came the second decision point, what do I do next, now that my application was refused? Well my lawyer with the legwork told me that I needed to appeal because they provided me the opportunity to. Hmm I thought, do you appeal just because it is an option, and with no compelling evidence? Will that lead to a different outcome? If I may burrow Einstein's parable of quantum insanity. Where he says that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, and expecting a different outcome. By that analogy, it is fair to say that both myself and my lawyer were insane. Well, he put some comments on a piece of paper and attached some family member statements of support to the application. The result was the same but at least we got ourselves a court hearing, where I had to pay my lawyer to rent another attorney because he doesn't attend court. And here comes the most embarrassing day of my life, my first official courtroom appearance. It was as jarring and jaw-breaking as I thought, and only one family member was allowed to go in with me to see the judge, along with my lawyer who was representing me. Now this is where I must state that the presence of a legal representation for me did not make any sense. The dude only made a two-sentence opening remark and said something along the lines that I felt I was British, and was qualified to make the application hence my application. The representation for the home office on the other hand, who had about 50 case files on him for that day, came firing in all cylinders, in his submission to the court. He said I did not provide a scintilla of evidence for my application, and even today in the court, I still haven't provided any evidence to support my application. He further went on to say that my case was basically a waste of the court's time and resource, and that the judge should throw out my application. Now at this point, I was expecting my lawyer to step in and save me. This is the point where any sane person would have expected my lawyer to come in, and at least save the day, and make some submissions. He just stood there, looking at me and said nothing. I was mortified as no one had prepped me for this, and I had no clue as to what was happening. The judge then asked me if I had anything to say or add to the arguments, I couldn't really say much. The judge then out of compassion for me said she needed more time to consider the case, and she'd let us know her judgment in the coming weeks. I was like no you don't. Of course, she knew there was no merit in my case and was just trying to be polite. After a few weeks, the verdict was in. And as expected, my application was rejected. I felt upset, disappointed, and most importantly angry with my lawyer for putting me through this debacle, and leading me on. I saw the writings on the wall but sentiments did not let me think about those decisions logically, maybe I would have saved myself a few thousands bucks, but I guess I wouldn't have learnt any lesson and most importantly not had this story to share. Since then, as you can imagine, I have only made applications by myself, without using any lawyer, and they have all been successful. In fact I have even consulted and assisted quite a few people with similar applications. I even made a PR application here in the UK for a country outside Europe, and was also successful as well. I guess I learnt the hard way and I am better for it. I got the message loud and clear. So folks, that's the ordeal with my lawyer for my UK citizenship application. Hope you learnt a thing or two. If you enjoyed this piece, then please like